everybody, welcome back to my Evolution of Disneyland series, and today we're going to be talking about Tomorrowland. If you are new here, I'm currently doing a series on my channel where I talk about the history of each land within Disneyland. And if you know absolutely nothing about Tomorrowland, I'm happy to inform you right now, but I'll do a little overview. In Disneyland, Tomorrowland sits on the right side of the park, and it's based on the future and space and rockets and that sort of thing. Tomorrowland is one of the original lands at Disneyland, and its opening day attractions were Autopia. Autopia, just Autopia. Now the reasoning it only had the one attraction is because they were actually running a little bit behind schedule and so some of the other rides weren't ready to open yet. And even as more stuff in the land started to open up, it was more focused on like sponsorships and exhibits. It was like this for a while and it does make sense because Tomorrowland wasn't really the whole mission and the magic of Disneyland. Even now when you think of Disneyland, people typically think of Fantasyland and it's classic like the teacups or Dumbo the Flying Elephant. When Tomorrowland opened, believe it or not, it was actually set in the futuristic year of 1986. I know, wow. Within its first few years, its additions included the Skyway to Fantasy, which was a little sky gondola that would take you to Fantasyland and vice versa. In 1959, it also got the Matterhorn, which I know that there's a whole debate whether it's in Fantasyland or Tomorrowland. Personally, I see it in Fantasyland, but it still drew people to that side of the park. But one of the biggest things that brought people to Tomorrowland was the access to the monorail. The monorail drops you off right in Tomorrowland and it also drives past it on its way there which makes guests be like hey I want to check this out let's go see what Tomorrowland's all about and right now you may be thinking that's great sounds like they have some more attractions but there are some even bigger ones in 1957 on the outside of Tomorrowland right when you're walking in from the entrance in the hub there was actually the house of the future that's what it's commonly called but it was actually called the Monticeo house this house was in an X shape and guests would walk through and get to see this futuristic style of living a lot of it looked like plastic or like think like the Jetsons it looked a lot like that another really exciting attraction that opened in Tomorrowland in 1959 was the submarine now if you've been to Disneyland you probably know the area that I'm talking about this original attraction was called submarine voyage through liquid space and it was you know the same thing you go down you see some animatronic fish and you're under the water it's pretty cool but it was a lot more serious because it was actually themed after the Cold War These submarines were a little less happy they were silver and kind of cold and sad so, yeah. At this time in 1959, it seemed like things were going great. They realized, no, the 80s are getting closer and there's going to be a time when this stuff is outdated. Now they start renovating things, which was Tomorrowland on the move. Within this period of time, it took a lot of the more exhibit-based attractions and replaced them with brand new things. 1967 saw some renovations for the Carousel of Progress, the People Mover, and the Astro Jets, which are now Astro Orbiter. Those are still there today. And since things were starting to become way more attraction-based, unfortunately, they did take out the House of the Future. In that spot though, today, that's where Pixie Hollow is. So now you can meet Tinkerbell and all of her friends. The submarine attraction wasn't as cool as it used to be, so then they rethemed it to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and they painted the submarines yellow, which was way more exciting. And after a while, the Carousel of Progress that was designed for a World's Fair and that premiered in Disneyland was actually packaged down and shipped to Walt Disney World. It is still there today, which is pretty incredible. People were loving this area, but things were closing down left and right just because of how easy it was for things to become outdated. So while things were successful and pretty chill, Disney decided to spice things up a little bit and add in their first thrill attraction. Space Mountain was actually intended to premiere a little earlier than it did, but because of Walt Disney's passing, they decided to delay the whole project. 1977, it's open and it blew people away. It's in the dark, you go super fast, and it's just, it's amazing. It's such a fun ride to be on. When they opened this, they also opened the Starcade, and like now you can be like, okay, an arcade, but this was the time when arcades were the coolest thing in the world, so it was extra exciting. Two really like modern things in this modern futuristic place it was just it was perfect for the time period and in Tomorrowland they have this building and it was used for a variety of different exhibits but at this time in the 70s it was used for an attraction called America Sings and this attraction in itself honestly doesn't really stand out but it is important for some Disney trivia after a few years and the attraction closed 
they were opening a ride called Splash Mountain. And since they had all of these animatronic animals, what they ended up doing was reprogramming them, dressing them up in new furs and everything, and putting them in Splash Mountain. So all of those animatronics, or at least the majority of those animatronics, are recycled. They actually did have a few rides to be really impressed with. Perhaps the biggest one, if you are a Star Wars fan, is Star Tours. The collaboration between Disney and George Lucas was very, very exciting for people, and it really blew people away. The attraction itself is a simulation where you get in like these spaceship type things, and it's on the screen, and it feels like you are in the movie. <laughs> Since people were really loving thrill rides, they decided to close down the People Mover. People Mover was just a slow moving track, it just went above Tomorrowland, and it was really nice. They still have it in Disney World. But it was a good time to just sit there and take in the scenery and look around and give your legs a break from walking everywhere. They introduced the rocket rods, which were fast moving cars supposed to give people a real thrill, if you will. And with the constant braking and accelerating, it really destroyed the track. So rocket rods were done. They couldn't put people mover back in. They couldn't do anything. If you go to Disneyland today and you're walking around and you're like, oh, what's above me? It's the rocket rod track still there. The only way for them to fix it and bring people mover back or even bring rocket rods back is to destroy all the towers above Tomorrowland. And it's, it would take a long time. It would take a really long time to put that all back together. So it's, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And I feel like I keep telling you this, but I have to tell you again. Tomorrowland got outdated again, everyone. I know, what a surprise. So now Imagineers, they got together and they're like, you know what, let's make this the best thing ever. We're gonna make it Tomorrowland 2055. They had crazy plans for this. They were gonna have alien encounter. They were gonna have different paint everywhere. They were, it was gonna be super intense. I gotta tell you more bad news because Michael Eisner was the CEO and everything went downhill. If you don't know who Michael Eisner is, yes, he was the CEO, but he had a lot of questionable plans. He wasn't really the smartest when it came to planning Disney's finances. He decided to open Euro Disney, which is now Disneyland Paris, when they knew it wasn't going to work out as well, and it just put the company in debt, and so all of those amazing plans that they had for Tomorrowland didn't happen. Well, it kind of did, but it didn't. The main issue with this was they had already started construction before they lost all the money. And so they had to do a little bit of construction, but they just couldn't do all the plans that they had. With all the cancellations, there was something that they could do. Buzz Lightyear. Whistler was everything in the 90s, you know what I mean? It was everywhere, and they were like, you know what, that Buzz Lightyear guy, he's a space ranger, he's futuristic, let's put him everywhere, let's put Toy Story everywhere. The queue area, queue meaning line if you don't know, the queue area for Rocket Rods got shut down when the ride got shut down, and then they were like, hey, we have the space, and so you know what they did? They made it. Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, which is my favorite ride in Tomorrowland. The last thing I'll talk about in terms of rides is, remember those submarines? So they had the Cold War one, and then they had the yellow ones, and they actually had people dressed as mermaids, and they would swim in the lagoon, it was really cool, and then that closed because it was outdated, and then it just sat empty for a really long time. And then Atlantis came out, and then they're like, ooh, this is gonna be such a good movie, let's make it an Atlantis ride, that'd be so cool. And then Atlantis came out, and everyone was like, Ooh, let's, let's not because nobody really liked Atlantis. And then it was still empty for so long. And then you know what happened? Nemo, 2003, Nemo came out. And then they were like, we're gonna make this Nemo. And you know what it is now? It's Nemo and it is so fun. It is so cool seeing all the little Nemo friends. Oh my, mm, 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 love it. And that is a brief, brief history on Disneyland's Tomorrowland, 1955 to 2020 and beyond, to infinity and beyond. But thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the series. I've got a few more videos. And make sure you subscribe so you can see when I post the rest of these. Like this video if you enjoyed it or if you learned something new. Comment down below your favorite ride in Tomorrowland and I will see you in my next one. Have a magical day, bye bye.